so I went along um, the went along my line that I had made and I made all of those important tick marks at the dark contour intervals that are the dark red and the ones that seemed important at the light red. Now there are some things that you want to look for when you're doing this just to watch out for. Uh, so keep in mind whatever your contour interval is here it's 20 feet so that'll help you kind of count out um, what you're doing but also look for things like this where you know you wouldn't want to make this tick mark um, and say oh we're going down 20 feet because it loops around it's actually the same contour interval so don't be surprised if when you're making this you've got to be you know like marking and pulling this up and looking underneath it and just double checking everything um, same thing happens down here at this contour um, uh, I, you know, had to keep in mind it's the same dark contour interval coming around and it's actually the same one that hits down here again too and you'd only know that by moving your paper to the side. So you should keep that in mind and mark all those tick marks. So after I did that, I thought, you know, I've got all these tick marks laid out. I have my A to A prime. Um, I know that my horizontal scale on my map, it says, is 1 to 2400 or 24,000, that means that every inch is equal to 24,000 inches on the map. 24,000 inches divided by 12 is about 2,000 feet. So this is where you need to start thinking about your vertical exaggeration. Um, if you unfold your piece of paper, you can draw these tall horizontal lines on the side, and you need to make sure that you're going to accommodate enough vertical um, distance to be able to plot your highest elevation. So I was like, okay, i got to go to 1,000, and I want it to be pretty even units, so I decided to make every inch um, 500 feet. Okay, so to get my vertical exaggeration then, I need to say my vertical exaggeration is 1 inch to every 500 feet. And so I'm going to take the formula for vertical exaggeration, horizontal scale divided by vertical scale, and I'm going to say an inch horizontally was 2,000 feet, an inch vertically was 5,000 feet, or 500 feet, and so that's a 4. So it's a 4 times exaggeration. You'd write it just like that, 4x. Alright, so now I'm ready to draw my actual elevations on my topographic profile. So I'm going to go right above 1,000, and I'm going to put my tick mark at 1,000. I'm going to do the same thing for 900. So I'm going to go right above where 900 was, marked horizontally, and put my 900. And these look like they're pretty steadily decreasing, so I'm going to, um, except for this one, it looks like it goes back up. So it looks like it drops to about 850. So here's 800, here's 850. Looks like it drops to about 850, and then it reduces down to 825. Um, let's see, so that'd be in between. It looks like it goes back back up to 850 here and then down to 800 right here and this I didn't mark anything in here because it really was very steadily decreasing uh, so I can draw that kind of like a straight line I need to go up to 700 make a tick mark and we stay at 700 for for quite a while so I'll come over here just make a little note to myself that um, I'm still at 700 and then all of a sudden here I drop down to 600 and that's right here and then it kind of tapers off gently over here so now we'll, we'll collect, connect these lines and notice that they're not perfectly straight they're just they're kind of rounded. That's how you want to draw it. And this has a lot of vertical exaggeration. So if you were in the field, you wouldn't really see this as a hill. Um, so now, for this next part, we've got to draw in our stratigraphy. Here's what I want you to keep in mind. There's two formulas going into this next part. That the tangent of the apparent dip is going to be the tangent of the true dip um, times sine of the angle. That That's the angle between the strike symbol and your line that you've chosen um, to, to make your tick marks along. 
And then there's also this other uh, formula in here that the tangent of the exaggerated dip, which is actually how you're going to draw it, is your exaggeration factor, which for us up here we did 4, times the tangent of the apparent dip. And that's the apparent dip you get in this part. Okay. All right, so before I start messing around with the strike and dips, I've gone through and I've marked all the contacts, so all the places where the beds change color. And for the ones where they just didn't have a map uh, symbol on this, I've just abbreviated it purple, yellow, blue, a deeper shade of purple, and it goes back and forth across here. Um, there's a weird orange bed in here um, that might be indicated by some kind of fault, something's mm -hmm. skipping around in there. So first I've marked the contacts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer those contacts up to my actual topographic profile. And I'm just going to put a tick mark where I have that change. So for example, I would kind of project this up, put a tick mark here, and I'm going to write the abbreviation. So I'll go through and do all that. So now I've transferred all of those um, contact marks up. Now I'm going to erase the contact marks down here and we're going to start looking at our strike and dips. Okay, so with your strike and dip symbols, you're going to find the ones closest to your line and you're going to use a ruler to project the strike and dip symbol right down onto the line. And by doing this, you're recording the angle between the strike and dip symbol and the line you have. Okay, so you can see that here what I've done is I've, I've used my map, I projected those strike and dips right onto here, so I recorded it. I recorded the direction of dip with the little tick mark and the amount. These are our true dips. And then I measured with a protractor, that thing, uh, the angle between the, the um, strike of the true dip and the profile line that I'm working with. I got 83, 85, and 90 degrees. Now if you get 90, you don't have to do anything with that, but with these 83s and 85s, we've got to apply this um, dip formula down here. So I'm going to do tangent of the apparent dip is what I want, so I don't know what that is, but I'm looking for it, is the tangent of the true dip. And the true dip was, uh, let's just do the one with 83 degrees, it's 25 degrees times sine of the angle that we had measured. So that was 83 degrees. Okay, so tangent, I'm just going to grab my calculator, tangent of 25 times sine of 83 is 0.4628. And I'm going to take the inverse tangent of that number to figure out what it is. Max, you're fine, buddy. And I'm going to get 24. So that angle we're looking for is 24.83. That's our apparent depth. But, like you know, we drew this with some exaggeration. So we're going to have to figure out what we're actually going to draw. What that exaggerated dip is going to be. The tangent of, I'm so sorry. Alright, so let's try this again. Tangent of the exaggerated dip, which we don't know, but we want is going to be the exaggeration factor, which for us was 4, times the tangent of the apparent dip, which was 24.83 degrees. So again, use your calculator. 4 times not make it a four. Four times tangent of twenty-four point eight three. Make sure your calculator set to degrees is one point eight five. And again, we'll do inverse tangent. So tan negative one of one point eight five is going to give us the angle that we actually want to draw on our map, or on, sorry, on our topographic profile. So we'll do inverse tangent of 1.85 is 61.6.
degrees, which is obviously really different than 25 degrees. So we're going to draw this as not as 65, but we're going to we'll figure out what we'll draw that as in a second. But we're going to draw this as about 62 degrees, 61.1 degrees. Now I'll I'll figure out this one here in a minute, but let's just talk about this guy for a second. What are we going to draw a 65 degree dip as? Well, we use the same formula we did just a second ago. The tangent of some kind of exaggerated dip is the tangent of the um, the apparent dip, which for us is the same as the true dip here, because we're perpendicular, times 4. So, 4 times tangent of 65, and we do inverse tangent of that, and we get 83.35 degrees. So we're going to draw this as being 83 Point three five degrees. I'm going to figure this one out and I'll be right back. Alright, so I did that math and I got 83.32. So now what you're going to do is you're going to kind of project this back up. Make sure that it ends in whatever bed you pulled it from on the map. And from that point on the surface, you're going to draw in your strike and dip. So we'll just do this one together and then I'll let you do this other stuff separately. Um, so we got 83.35. So I'm going to put my hole that's on the top of my protractor right on top of where um, my symbol projected. I'm going to keep my top of my protractor horizontal and I'm going to try to put this at 83 right there that's what I want okay and I'm just gonna um, draw this in so you can see what I did is I just put this little tick mark I'm gonna go ahead and extend that tick mark up to the surface and then I'll do the other two okay so I did that and notice how I erased these lines and how because this dip went back the other way I went ahead and sketched that in the opposite direction Okay, so now we're able to kind of figure out what's going on with these beds at depth. And there's some things you need to think about. One, that beds don't tend to change thickness. They don't tend to always pinch or swell. You want to try to maintain thickness. Um, there's also no such thing as a gap between beds. So you can't draw one bed in like this and say, oh, nothing else happens until we get to here. You, you can't have a, a void um, going on in your stratigraphy. Um, so just take a second to think about this and I'm going to start sketching mine in.